Hello, this is a free call from Charlie. An incarcerated individual at the Leon County Jail. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To accept this free call, press to accept this free call, press 1. To refuse, thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Hi, Charlie. Hey, hey honey. Hey, Dad. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. No. Yeah. More important, how are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm good. I, I talked to Roland. spent a lot of time talking to Bree. I didn't even realize how much time I spent talking to him. Okay. Well, but that's good. I know Dan Dan has been writing. Did you get, I don't know if you spoke to him at all, but. No, I have not talked to him at all. Okay. Because he's. He's trying to get this thing changed and he's, and he's very frustrated because, yeah, this is right, right after the first one was right after we hung up at 430 exactly. And right. I said to him, I said, earlier I said, I'm still talking to Charlie. I told him what you said about Sergeant Whaley. Then I said, well, thank you for try, trying. Chief Mack never came. And he wrote back, I trust Whaley. It will get done. It might be a day or two, but he definitely has helped us in the past. So okay. and then he some other yeah. things that he, yeah, he's trying. I found out um, from the officer that says usually after you get found guilty of my charges, they put you in here for seventy two hours for observation. Oh. Uh, so and then I was like, listen, like this weekend is a weekend, the same weekend. Like I don't want you know chain action to be here on Friday and have to be the one who signed off on it. Monday. I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm in a room where I, I can't look out any window. And I've got mirrors facing me and the camera in here. They don't turn the lights on. So the lights on 24 7. So it's like, you know, I have these bright lights on my eyes and I'm like not able to look past six feet of concrete in front of me with a lot of shit all over it. And piss on the floor. It's like, that's not right. Like, you should. You're trying to, my mental health is not getting better by locking me in a box. Who did you say that to? One of the officers. And she said, well, yeah. I'm going to try to talk to my lieutenant tomorrow and you know, my mom's on the ship tomorrow. So he expires. Because it's already been over 48 hours. So. So it's only been 48 hours. And honestly, it's been like four weeks. It's been, it's been four. 48 hours, more, a little more than that. So tomorrow, why can't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. For them to be only be on day shift, and then 48 hours would be tomorrow evening, he'd be gone. He may be done Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and he'd come back and let you out on Monday. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to like, get out before the weekend of the Veterans Day weekend. He may be yeah. on like a different schedule than most people. He may be like a nine to five in government hours. Yeah, I mean, I'll talk to Dan in the morning. I'll explain that to him. I haven't called him at all because he's given me so much of his time. He doesn't yeah. listen to me now. I'm sure he's very pissed off himself. He's very, he's very upset, actually. He's very upset. I mean, I mean he, made, he made a lot of promises and it wasn't his fault. He was, no. and I was talking to Bree about it. I, I don't know if I ever told you this. I had people who came in when I said, Do you know anything about the case? They said, Well, I saw, I, I listened to a podcast over my dead body and I saw the Dateline or 2020 episode also. Well, do you think that you could separate how you feel and listen to the rules of law and judge him fairly with what you just said that you viewed? Oh, yeah, I can. Okay. Tell, tell me they were scratched. They didn't get, no, they don't get scratched and make it to the next round. And I have to use my X in the next round to get rid of them. So I'm using my X to get rid of Listen, if you, if you sat, I haven't listened to it, but I get the feeling if you sat and listened to a six part podcast about my case, it tells me you're overly interested and it tells me that you've been tainted. 
Okay, now you tell us that you can totally separate yourself from any ideas or opinions you had after listening to that. Well, how are you going to remove that section of your brain that comes to that conclusion? Like, that's the question that you asked. It was a very polite way of saying, like, if you can't get people out of your head, you already have thoughts and ideas and beliefs. You're coming in with beliefs. Beliefs don't disappear if somebody says, don't think like that anymore. You still have, you know, everyone's got their experiences and beliefs that they, they right coming in. I should have people who haven't heard of the change. Of course. The problem is, as the officers have told me, you'd have to be living under the rock if you said you had a heard of the change. Or you'd be lying. And the more I talk about it, Talked about it with you today and talked about it with Ray. There was a uh, of this is what I'm saying. So they come in and they listen to the podcast and they make it to the next round. So over the 152 people, we had 92 people being struck for cause. That means they said something that prevented them by law from being on my jury. They eliminated themselves by saying something. 92 people. Kind of I don't know. I don't understand how that's not a reason immediately to, to be struck. You shouldn't have no. to use a cross on that. That's insane. No. She, she just said she can listen to the rules of law. She can judge me fairly. She can view me as innocent of proving guilty. And she can separate it. So she's one of the 60 that makes it to the next round. And then once they have the 60 in the next round, they lined up 21 chairs and it's 21 people so there's seven chairs in front of the jury box, so there's 21, 22 actually. So they did a set of 22, and they did a whole questionnaire on that, and then like, then they announced which ones they had to eliminate because it was like, uh, it was like the, uh, the New York Yankees guy, the guy who's the GM of a restaurant who doesn't want his restaurant to make sure the press. Yeah. Uh, you know, those people got eliminated. So then we, there was a certain amount that were kept, and then one that got kept saved, and then we came and we like, we put a whole new group of 22. And then we had another whole seating in our 22. And then, oh, like maybe five or six of those got eliminated for cause out of that group of 22 when you questioned even more. And then you were down to like 30, 30, 35 people. And then out of the 35 people that made it to that point, there was still like another 20 people sitting in the gallery, like, in the gallery, like, in the uh, pews. Yeah. So there's 20 people are still sitting in the pews. They have their second set of 20 that's up there, 22, we're asking questions. And they were like, okay, we've got 30, 30, 35 out of uh, the original 44 are still left. And then we go back and we, we play this game where everybody's name is on a sheet of paper. On the seat that they sat, labeled by two groups, one through 22 in one group, one through 22 in another. Certain people get X off for cause, and then you have what's left. So then you have what's left, and you start with your number one. You like keep them to the space or to us, and they're like, we'll keep them. And then we look at them and we're like, okay, we'll keep them. So we go to your number two. The space goes, no, we're going to use our hands. Your number three, you're like, we'll keep them. Your number four, okay, we'll use our hands. So each side is 10 X's, and then they get repeated in that number of order. So it works its way all the way to the top. So if you have a horrible juror, but he's number juror 35, you can never get to him. You may not have to use your X to get rid of him. So it's kind of a game. You don't want to use you each go in one turn, then their turn, one turn, then their turn to use your stripes. So at the end of the day, I can tell you that, and the jurors made it, through the original questionnaire, I would have to say two in ten will probably get jurors from that you would know this guy. This is how I asked you. What's that? I, I missed that. Two in ten will probably what? I couldn't hear that. I'm sorry. Two, I would say two in ten that made it yeah. to the next round would have been jurors that would have been good for me. They would have given me a fair shot. They were somebody who was highly intelligent. They were white. They had. A, they were successful. 
Two and ten were, were good jurors. Like, like that juror number fifteen, I said to Dan at the beginning, I'm like, I love that guy. Like, he's, he's gonna be perfect for us. And he's playing exactly what we need. Like, we said that to each other. Whole time he's on the jury, he's shaking his head and nodding with us. He told Dan that he would have acquitted me. I know. I know. That would have been next up. Like, and these other like, two, these other two, the two that you felt were good, they they X them out. Anybody mom that would really be like one of the guys that you know what? I'm a former law enforcement officer, so they can do really bad. And he goes, you know what though? Because I was a law enforcement officer for 15 years, and I was falsely accused of beating my wife, and I lost my entire life. I got arrested. All these people turned their backs on me. All these friends that I thought I had in law enforcement wanted nothing to do with me. And I got a judge and I was totally in it. And it ruined my life. So I don't judge because when I first started off in law enforcement, I thought everybody was guilty. And he's like, I look at this guy, he goes, he looks like my brother. He really does. I think I can definitely treat him fairly. I would give him a fair shake. I know what it's like to be false and accused of something I didn't do. Like, I would definitely give him a fair shake. Guess what? Keep it close. Like, so, juror number 15, that was the one who told Dan he would have acquitted me. Right. He got that stuff. Another guy that would have been great for me, he got that stuff. So it was like we were getting the two and ten that were going to be good for me. And we, we knew that if we were asking questions, it's like they were asking questions, and we were trying to find out, you know, what are these people like? What, you know, the normal stuff that you you hire a jury or something for to bring out. Right. And it was like, there were so few people that would be good for me. We know we knew who was going to be good for me. And if they were good for me, they put an X on them. But the problem was, was that it was only probably two in ten that were going to be good for me. The rest were absolute shit. And I'm sitting there using X's on people who listen to the podcast. Like, to be honest with you, like, it's a jury selection, and they had it down to a side. I mean, you should see how much. Like, we had one guy, his last name is Jack, and he comes in. That little old white guy doesn't really know much about the case. Kind of heard something about it years ago. You know, could really treat me fair and everything. Well, I guess the consultants go on everybody's Facebook. They have Facebook. They do research on these people. Right. You know, you know what they found? He was posting about the case that he wished he could kill the Fredo Garcia. Oh my God. He was saying that he never posted anything. Um, so after he left the room, the jury consultant brought it up to the judge and said to the judge, you see the problem we're having? People are coming in here and lying to get on the case. And he said, what do you mean? Or this gentleman that we just interviewed we bring them back in because we found the post that he said that he could be fair and didn't know too much about the case, but he's posting about it on his Facebook that four months ago he wished he could kill him to Jerry Garcia and get revenge. He's, he's alive on the case. He's posting about it on his open Facebook, on his public Facebook account. About the case. Unbelievable. Months, months ago. And he just came in, well spoken, white guy, you know, wearing a jacket and a shirt and nice dress shirt, showing up for jury duty. And that's when Dan was like, this is scary. Like, this guy just literally came in and lied to all our faces. Like, he's posting about the case on his public Facebook account months ago. That's how involved he is in the case. He's writing about it months ago. He showed up to watch the case in trial. Right, in real time. He showed up to be a member of the audience and watch. You know, it wasn't like the jury. It was not a fair, no, it was, no, it, I don't know, jury your peers. It was not a fair jury. That's the problem. It was, um, it was not a chance in fucking hell. Mm. There was, 
So I, I know I'm not as smart as, as Dan or Josh, but I can tell you that I, I felt it in my bones when I was in South Florida. I felt it when in 2020, I felt that. I felt it in my bones. I felt it in my gut. I knew that coming up to Tallahassee would not give me a fair shot in the fucking years. And it was because of the amount of press that I was hearing that it was generating the podcast, the, the small town that, I mean, if I would have had any idea that they would have turned, that they would have turned this into, you know, crazy emails and, and Wendy's book and Wendy's showing up at the crime scene and, and it's, it's taking the context of, uh, you know, he's not having the context of anything, just taking the words out of the sentences that they're in and just highlighting them and being like, you said this, you said this, you said this, like, and just twisting the truth and twisting the truth and twisting the truth. Like, I would have told you, without a doubt, without a doubt, there's been a chance in hell it would turn out anyway, but it did. The only difference was I had Dan telling me you know, and other people too long in South Florida, but there were other people in South Florida, and then the end when I got up here, that like, look, we're going to make sure that you get a fair jury. No, think he's ever, and I and I know because I've discussed this already with him. He's never encountered anything like that. No, it's the publicity. I mean, it, it, it was bomb. Um, it was it was so. For Dan, and we got to understand that he, he was telling me, look, if, if I give you a score of 70 on how you testify, if you get a 70 on how you testify, I'm driving you home. He's like, I, you know, every way he plays his case out, he's like, I can get you to the finish line, but if you score a 70, I drive you home. I get done, I go, how, I go, what's my score? How did I do? He goes, you get a 95. Hmm. You get a 95. He goes, Dolphins were very impressed with you. Everybody was impressed with you. He was showing me text messages. People were sending him. He's like, look, the worst we're going to do is hang. He's like, I, I think we're going to win now. I do it again. Like, and he said, so he, he said, look, everything on the case, if you would have told me two weeks ago, I would be at this point, at this point in the case, he would have told me that. That sure is. I don't understand. He said that jury, it wasn't that jury. It's this town. I know. It's not that jury. You got to realize there wasn't one fucking person that voted for me. Not one. This is a first degree murder case. Not one. It has to be so plain shot that you know what happened. Not like, hey, y'all, use your common sense. You know, the TV, the phone calls to the landline, the, the route that Wendy took that morning. Like, come on now. What does it all add up to? Like, all this code talk. Like, on TV code, Wendy went the route she went and never goes to a liquor store. So she went the only way she knows how to go. Picking up a bottle for a party. But it's like, you know, it's just, you know, with her using Wendy's book with the line that she wrote in there eight, six years ago to really make it seem like this, this uh, actress, you know, this phony actress thinks Tallahassee's a, a shit town on the way to civilization. Got on the map on the way to civilization. Like, if you could sit in those people's faces and say, I'm smarter than you, I'm richer than you, I'm better than you, and I'm headed to Miami. That's exactly what you just did when you follow that up with an autopsy photo. There was no fucking way with a presentation like that, with all the, you know, they say it goes towards motive, but like all the fucking bullshit fluff that you put in, there's not a chance in hell you're going to win. Not a chance in hell. And especially not when, when I, I'm, I'm able to find two out of ten good jurors, but I'm using my exes to get people off who are watching the podcast. 
So I'm not actually using my X's to like get people that would be good on my case. Right. Get people that are good. There's a few good ones who are taken care of by the state. In my case, you were either a good juror or a really bad juror. I mean, I know it sounds like, oh, they're good if they're made and bad if they're for the state, but it's like, everybody for the state, it's just a small handful. And you can easily identify them. They spoke their mind. They told you that you really felt that they'd give me a fair shot and they, they looked like somebody that would have come from a, you know, an educated, successful background. Not, not the guy who makes 12 bucks an hour working at the Florida State bookstore. You think he's ever written a book? You think he wants to read about an author shitting on Tallahassee on a way down to Miami? Like, this wasn't that Dan misread the jury. This isn't that Dan misread what Tallahassee was. I can't, I can't explain it any other way. It's like, oh, it came, it came in great. She, she's showing the monsters of me calling the home phone that we've had since 1976. Probably because I knew my parents were in the house and they don't get great reception unless they call the lot of the landline when they're in the house. And they better reception on the landline. That's the only reason I would call that. I'm calling from my cell phone. She gave that to monster twice. I know. Which means it does make sense. It does make sense. It was, it was statistically significant. They didn't care that you only had that address for. 65 days in 2014. They put a timeline up to the end of 16. And what did they show? 99.8% of the time, I don't call that phone. 99.8%. When do I call it? When they're making the first trip, when they're making the second trip. Y'all decide. Use your common sense. There's something going on here, isn't it? There's a, there's a tie. There's a, there's a commonality. I mean, there is a commonality, I'm not going to lie, but it just, it just happens to be like that. Well, how the fuck, how many times are you going to say it just happens to be like that? You know, and then you're know, referring back to the crazy emails and when you want to get the hell out of Tallahassee, and then when you changed the names of the boys, and then when you kept the boys from seeing their dance parents, like, you paint a horrible picture, and you tie it together with Wendy's book and your emails, and you, and you spin a story. And these people don't know me from Adam. They know there's, they know there's, like, there's stuff in the legislature to let grandparents see kids because of Wendy. You think they're doing that for fun, or you think, really, Wendy's keeping her grandkids from the grandparents? Mom, I know, I know all these things. It's like a bad fun, it's a bad fucking movie. Yeah. All right, just like you get it. Now I'm not in my shock phase, obviously, if I hate your case. Yeah, well, you're just a right thing. I go from like, I go from shock. Bad, anger, shock. I mean, it's people. People with a brain watch my testimony. They, yeah. they recognize. They recognize. There's holy shit. There is something here. Yeah. Holy shit. He's getting security cameras in his house and his office. It was advanced in weeks. It was actually within days. Within weeks. Eight days later, they got installed. So, nine days later. So, oh, he wanted to get cameras anyway. Yeah, we, we talked about it, but I never really moved on it. Oh, cool this. Yeah. But, like, called the guy up two days later and scheduled him for that weekend. He was within the week. Cameras were getting installed the, the following weekend. The following Saturday. This happened on the 18th. Friday. The following weekend, it was getting installed. You know, so it's like, it doesn't matter. See, 
It wasn't the evidence that was stacked against you. It was the whole package they were able to paint. No, what it was. It was just the total. It was, it was a day long special. It was, let me, it was, let me get him on the stand and drill him. Okay, it got nowhere. This is Dateline. This is Dateline with autopsy photos. Come on, y'all. Use your brain. Use your brain. Like, and you know what? I was living in my bones when I was down south that if I ever came up to Tallahassee, I would never have a shot in the fucking world. Especially not with the, the, the climate. And, you know, and what, how big of a case it was to Kappelman and all the intrinsic storytelling, finger pointing, foreshadowing ways that she could get people to hate me. The, the Jew that's infatuated with Nazis. You know, the, the, the crazy emails. You know, she was trying to spin, she was really trying to spin a lot of that stuff with Daisy. So I sat up there and I was like, Daisy's a great guy, but I think I liked them more than my sister did. But I think I did a good job of explaining, like, Dave's birthday's in April, my sister's birthday's in April, the wiretap started in April. And I made a point of saying he farted, my nephew farted on his head and he thought it was funny. Like, he loves his voice. Like, that's what I like most about it. I thought it would have been a great opportunity for my sister that she'd be passing up, so I, I tried to convince her to, you know, she knew me for two years. It wasn't like she just met the guy on the dating app. Like, he was a total package, you know, but I guess I like the more than, more than my sister did. Charlie, you like that. so real, so natural, so honest. Yeah. You did. Like, yeah. you were, she was spinning the day, she was spinning the day calls to make it seem like, What's in her business? No, my husband was one of her best friends, and she really loved it, just not in a relationship way. But she'd been with him for two years, and her birthday was coming up, and she wasn't going to invite him to the birthday, so thought she was making a big mistake. She didn't. I was looking out for her. I didn't force her or anything to say. I was just trying to talk some sense to her. I care about her. No big deal. She was trying to spend those days called like it was like, an example of us meddling in Wendy's love life. Like, this whole thing was a TV production. I mean, the witnesses that showed up, they, they admit they lied. The key yeah. witnesses are lying. Like, Dan said, you testify well, you get on 70 or above, I'm driving. I'm saying, listen, I can get you to the finish line, but you gotta, you gotta hold up on your cross. You gotta do a good job on your rack. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and go through everything with you. Like, we're gonna go through all these wires. We're gonna hit every point of questioning. They're gonna see that you're telling the truth. Like, mm-hmm. get home. Get home. Like, y'all come back to you. No, it didn't come all down. He's like, he's like going not in that town. Uh, what, what he said to me is that it all comes down to whether they believe you or they don't believe you. And I said to myself, you know, I was like, I don't think he's down to they believe you or don't believe you. They already hated me. They already had every reason to hate me. They, they, they could never relate to me in my life. You know what the postman is sitting there saying? There's a lot of streets in Tallahassee and she ain't nowhere near that street. Why the hell is she traveling down that street on that date on that time? In hindsight, probably a postman was a 20 year sergeant and the, and the army was the last leader that he wanted on that case. Because what is his experience? Post, postman, no streets, like the back of their hand. There's a lot of streets in Tallahassee. You don't need to be driving down that street on that day on that time unless you're. 
or to one of them. Yeah. And, and, and if she knew something was going on, and that's why she was driving down that street on that time, on that day, then you force it, of course it's going to go. Or am I going to believe that that's a pure coincidence? Use your common sense. Like, I knew in my bones when I was in South Florida with that, what, what it was going to be like up here. I just guess I, I didn't follow my gut and instinct. I'll tell you that. Such a fucked up situation. Sounded kind of unbelievable. Like I was, I was talking to Bree, and she's like, "Charlie, I was sending your parents all these like new messages that people were writing on these like." The blogs and everything, not that it matters, but like, it's opening up people's eyes. People are coming to new conclusions. It was, it was clear to them. You know, they're like, oh my God, like, but you know what, man? I guarantee you, none of those kind of people that write those, were writing down there were A, from Tallahassee, and B, they want people that the, the prosecution would have ever left the bunk of my jury. And I would never get 12 people like you at number 15. Could you get one of them on my trip? We knew who people, and if someone is educated, they make the money, they're professional, they're 40s, 50s, late right, 30s maybe, the 30s, 40s, 50s, they didn't get the case. The problem is anybody that comes close to that description and you get one of your 10 axes and call out the court. Mm-hmm. This, this wasn't a case that got facts or proof or reasonable doubt. This was like, y'all use your common sense. Well, you know what? If you told me y'all use your common sense and and uh, and you told me that this chick goes down the street on this day, on this time, and traveled 10 miles, and this is what her answer was, and this is who she's, her brother is, and this is who his brother's girlfriend is, and this is the shit she wrote about in that book. She wanted to leave Tallahassee. She's an actress. Her mom even says it. Like, read it for yourself. Like, it's plain that she made it plain to say. Like, that's what the case turned into. And I, I get it. Like, I know there's other evidence, but that's a, when you're showing up is a big, is a big piece to get over. Like, and that right there will get you convicted that one piece of evidence before, before you do all the other. I don't even believe what I've been talking for hours before. Well, I don't even believe what I've been right now. But, but what is, uh, I mean, with all that extrinsic shit, that, that became the case. Like, it didn't become Luis Rivera said it could have been. It didn't become because the witness is still lying. Like she shows up and just lying again and again and again and again. Like, it didn't become, look at the piece of shit that the state's bringing in with Ryan. It didn't become, look at Jeff Lacoste, the dude thinks he's brain. He thinks he's brain. And like, now he's making up a bunch of shit, throwing, just trying to throw shit everywhere because he feels like he's under the gun. Like, you're, you're talking about like, real life elements and facts and Build the case, and you discuss, and you and you, and you want to debate, or you want to prove points. This 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 closing was nothing but dateline with autopsy photos. 
I mean, if, if you had a name, it should be grounds for appeal for the basis that they showed the autopsy photo twice and left it up there for seven or eight minutes each time. Like, no one's, no one's debating that he was brutally killed, but it's like what you're tormenting these people with is you're, you're playing with their emotions. Not only are they upset, you're showing them the before picture, the after picture, you're showing it to them twice. Like, you're traumatizing the jury. You know? And then, and then you're telling them that these people think you do in Tallahassee or a, a dot on the map on the way to civilization. You're not part of civilization. She's above you. She's above you and she showed up there when this was done. That's basically basically what she was showing. And, and who benefited from her, from this happening? Who got what she wanted? You know, like, it just, it just became, it wasn't the case. You know, the, the case was what happened July 18th. Okay. The case is what happened to me at my house on July 18th. Wake up. Like, she realized when I was on the stand, she wasn't going to be able to prove her point of what she wanted to show on July 18th. So the only way she could dispute it is say that you remained friends with her. Of course, she was protecting me. Like, it was never hung out. Other than to really give her money, I paid her one or two times that happened to people were hanging out. But, like, we were done dating that week. We were done. Like, but then she goes ahead and closes me. She's like, they were, they were together four or five months later, they were dating. No, we weren't. No. Or, I was with Whitney from... Beginning of August, I went out with Whitney to the Keys, and then she flew up to Pennsylvania, and then she came down the end of August. She pretty much almost moved in my house the end of August. Like, she pretty much moved in my house the end of August. You know, like, doing, I was with Whitney. I mean, she got to Brooklyn, she got moved in with Clint, but she pretty much spent every night at my house. I spent two nights at Clint's house, and she came in in August. Like, like you're saying these people have carried on a relationship for another four months? Like, totally lied and twisted it. But, like, these fucking idiots can't remember what they heard last week. They're relaying on, relying on Georgia's summary. Like, well, how you can give an instruction to disregard whatever the prosecutor says? Can you hear me okay? Oh, I hear you fine, honey. He's doing okay. I'm, I'm doing fine, Charlie. I'm just listening. Yeah. No, I'm just talking. I'm just like, yeah. You know, how how you can give an instruction to the jury just to only pay attention to the evidence given the case? Don't take anything that the lawyers say in closing as as fact. But then they're giving a summary and they're listening. They're hanging on every word like it is fact. I mean, if, if what they're saying is not fact. Might as well put your headphones on and go to sleep. Right. Like, you're listening, you have to listen to what they have to say. You're not able to cross reference that with stuff earlier in the case when he said she never slept in his house again after the 18th and they broke up that week. No, Appleman's like, no, they, they were dating for four or five months later. Not true at all. He said a complete fucking lie to paint the picture of something that's not taking place. That should not be allowed. No. No, it should not be allowed. Because if I'm on the jury and I didn't hear the first time when I was on the stand four days earlier when, when I had the when our relationship ended, and they didn't catch that, but they're locked in and capital in on Monday, she's letting them know it, it didn't end until four months later afterwards. Carrying on a relationship? No, I didn't carry on a relationship for four months. That's a complete If, if that's the case, then what Kaplan's saying does make more sense. No, but it wasn't the case. But it wasn't she lied. the case. She's just lying. You're lying. You're, you're, you're lying to create, to create a story for your case to sound better. And it does. Like, 
his, his thoughts, I can't see how that's not appealable. That, like, she's telling the jury that he carried out a relationship for four or five months when we were done that week. Without any proof. I mean, just said it. Yeah. Just said it. Why would they not believe it? The prosecutor's not lying. That is what the officer's word. The prosecutor. Why was she lying about relationships, though? That we are, you know, we're close together. We're carrying on this relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Charlie? Honey? Charlie? Charlie, can you hear me? Let's wait about 30 seconds. Yeah. I thought I heard like a. Mine 36, I wonder if it's. Mine 46, mine have. Mine. Charlie, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I lost you for about 30 or 40 seconds there. Okay. Just hearing. Yeah. But, you know, it's like. Yeah, you know, we hooked up once in October. So boyfriend and girlfriend from that night forward for four or five months until so we decided to separate. You make it seem like we didn't separate because of that. Yes, we did. But you're gonna lie, and then people are gonna listen to your lie, and then they're gonna evaluate the case. Every word out of your mouth is to, is to make people fucking hate me. It's not wrong. My sister, she went off how she could. Hate you, hate your mom, hate your sister, she went off how she could. Bring in the code, bring in the coincidence, bring in the landline shit. Like, none of that has to do with my fucking house on the 18th. Nothing. No. I'm like, honestly, mom. Exactly what I pictured being with, without you. It's even worse than I pictured. Put it out. Like, no. I, I pictured it being an unwinnable place that you could come to and get a fair trial. Un, unwinnable. Maybe only at the mouth to get an Ableton up here for, for seven years. They've had an Ableton in their mouth for seven years. They were mad really mad for what he said. They were, they were really mad. They got nothing new. Everything on Dolce V that could be explained, especially by the fact you missed the whole first half of the conversation. You're hearing all the bits and pieces, and there's no context unless I tell you why I said what I said and why I said it. You know, like... It's all perfectly explainable. I remember when he was asking me questions and she was asking me questions about it. I was explaining what I said and why I said it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It wasn't, I wasn't hiding from her. I was like, no, she always used that expression, the Nazi shit, because the Nazis were crazy. So I'm trying to tell her I'm going to get someone to go crazy on these people and get them to stop. Mm. Like, why did you get so like, crazy on that guy in the first place? I'm like, because it has someone protecting me and handling it. And she made it clear. And she wouldn't tell me who the person was. This guy was hide wasn't hiding his identity. He could have been the same person. Like, that wire when I said, it's not the same person without a doubt. So I'm 48 what? hours. Like, what? that's comparing the first portion to the second portion. That's right. Plain as day. Like, that should be a case that you play, and you're like, that's reasonable doubt. We just heard what you're talking about. We're good. No. We're building a case on Wendy's fucking book. His mom's, her mom's emails. Wendy's travel, her travel plans that day. Like, the, the code word TV, the whole phone line. Oh, none of that has anything to do with the case. Or me. Especially me. But it's like, what are the chances of her showing up there that day, that time, that fucking street, that she's not involved? Oh. That's, that's one in a million, man. 
that the odds of that, what are the odds of that? That's, that's one million that she's going down that street that day, that time, an hour afterwards, and it's not related to what she's had. Well, that person said that to me, I got to say. But I thought, like, okay, that doesn't have anything to do with me. That's her. But you know what? If she was there because she couldn't help herself, it's because she would have had to know from me. More than likely. Is that a coincidence? Like, like, it tied everything. It was worse than I think. As bad as I thought it would be if I came up here, I didn't think that it was going to be this kind of show. I mean, even to the point they're showing the, the 753036 number. They're creating evidence. And do you know what's crazy, Mom? When, when Dan saw that, when I was with him, and he saw that the you know what he said to me when I was going through stuff with him here at the jail? Yeah. He goes, he goes, that's awful. He goes, if they're going to use this as a demonstrative, fantastic. He goes, let them. He's like, they, I will destroy them with how stupid this is. He's like, this doesn't prove anything. This, this is just, I mean, they need something statistically significant, but I'm calling, as I said, I'm calling from my, my cell phone to their home phone because I know they're home and they get better reception on the landline. Oh, I'm going to destroy them when I can with this because this just shows how they're just harassed. Really, no idea what's going on. Well, they, you know, because they didn't have any real evidence, so they so they did that. They played games with it. And he was going to destroy them. You know what, Mom? The people that were there hated me so much. Everything you put on that plate in front of them, they eat it up. It just became a pile of evidence. Looking at it and going, "This is a pile of shit." They were poor people. Not on the map, on a way of civilization. It's like it's like saying this, this smart ass woman has been in the book on the bus. It was like a psychological they, they he was put in together like a psychologically weak somebody to Hate the person, to feel like they were personally insulted, and to, and to render a verdict. Like you, you, you would not stand a chance with that jury, with any jury oh, right here. No. That's a man. That's a man. Man, there's like this was a, this was crazy. This was crazy. Like I, I got Josh Dubin to tell me I don't need the girl who like who just listens to. Over my dead body podcast. Like, I mean, he did a great job asking people questions and like interviewing. Like, he, he really was fantastic. But as far as picking a jury, it was an obvious waste. It was an obvious waste. Yeah. You know, it was, it was an obvious. It was an obvious waste. And every, I don't. I don't even think. The, and like, because Dan said to me, he just looked at it, they didn't believe you. Because they didn't believe, they had it out of belief, and maybe he's just talking. You know? It was like, they didn't believe what he said is what actually happened. But I'm like, look at them and look at me and look at my life. Like, they weren't there, and they don't know what my life was like. And they weren't, they weren't in my house that night. Like, they didn't want to be me. They couldn't relate to me. They, they had nothing in common with me. They, they hated me to begin with. You know, any anybody that would have that would have been like a, that would have been a two and ten, they would have said these are these people would be good for him. They got that. They, got, they, got that. They, they, they knew the jurors didn't want that. I just had, it wasn't even about the jurors I didn't want. It was the ones that were fucking terrible. I had to get rid of them. 
there, so right. I don't understand how it's not that far. How they could just say, "Yeah, I think he failed," and move on to the next round. That's all they have to say. I mean, Jesus, you could be a sheriff's officer and come in. Oh, your sergeant, you let me go? No. All I have to say is I can be totally fair and objective and follow the rules of law, and then you're not disqualified. So you, you, what podcast was it? And they remember the name of the podcast from four years earlier. So you remember the name from 2019. Mm. Four years ago, I listened to the podcast, and I saw a date line. And read a little bit about it too. I think it's pretty interesting. Can you be fair? Oh yeah, no, I definitely can be fair. I mean, I, I don't need Jeff Dubin to sit there and tell me, "Yeah, I probably want to put an X on this one." No, he did a great job asking the questions, and we got everybody back there. But like Dan said to me, he said, "I don't know how truthful I'm sure it was with us." You don't know how what? I, could, I didn't hear them. All right. I don't know how truthful oh. or curious it was. I mean, you, you don't know what you don't know, and when they tell you they know nothing, then what's your follow-up question? Where are you on news for? I just kind of I like to work regarding I don't really know much about it. And a whole lot about the case, you know, what the full case on it. You know, like, but I can tell you this, five people had law enforcement in their family, and three people, either them or their spouse, worked in Florida City. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't understand that. They shouldn't have been on the jury, certainly the law enforcement. Therefore, they had law enforcement in their family. The problem is this is a law enforcement community. You're not going to go to church and not go to police officers. You're going to go to your church. There's nine, there's nine law enforcement agencies in, in Tallahassee. Nine. You know, FDLB, Highway Patrol, uh, Sheriff's Office, Tallahassee Police, Capitol Police, uh, you the FBI. There's a lot of agencies that have that Harry comes up with. That's told there's actually nine. So, pretty likely you got someone in your family that's a police officer or a friend of a police officer or, or you work at Florida State or your spouse works at Florida State or, you know, I mean, looking at this batch club that worked at the fucking bookstore at Florida State, wearing his Florida State gear and You know, say they were at Florida State at all. Thinking to myself, like, got $12 an hour at the bookstore. I was writing a book, trash in Tallahassee on the way to Miami. Just writing a book. Oh, God on the map. All that was in the case for one reason only. And it was just to get people paid. You know, why, why do you think she was asking me what is what is what does Brie do for Dave? And how old is she? Yeah, I know I know. I know. I heard these questions and they're not looking at each other like, What? What is she asking? Makes no sense. Because she knew that she was the nanny. She was thinking this girl was like, could have been 16, 17, 18. Yeah. You know, and it would have sounded like scandalous. That's why I answered her and I said, No, yeah, she graduated college. And then she went to work for Dave. She's the mother of my child. That's very, very nice. I actually appreciate the talking about it. Saying that she went to college, not just saying she was a man. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I started off by saying she went to college for four years. So she went to college, she graduated, and then she went to work today. Totally 
take her away from the Dallas point and saying, like, oh, is she 18? Yeah. That's where she was headed with it. The way everything else was like, what she did was she knew she wasn't going to win on cross-examination with me. No, she lost she, on that. Up. She, everybody said she, she totally lost. Yeah. She totally lost. She totally got corrected multiple times. I do the wires better than her. I know the case better than her. She lost. So when a prosecutor has the defendant on the stand and she gets nowhere, she's getting put in her place. What does she do? She puts on a Dateline TV show for two hours. How many times did she put those pictures up? Twice. And it wasn't just like she showed the picture and they saw it and she moved on. She left it up and talked with it on. What she did is first she showed the photo of him with his blue tie and the white shirt standing by with the law school white columns, you know? Right. So first it was that photo and then this is what happened. This is the before and this is the after. He was stripped of his clothes put on the table, photograph. And this is what he looked like that day. So why did why did she show it again? What was the what was the reason? Because we didn't see anything like that. Oh yeah, no, they wouldn't they wouldn't show that on T V the most horrible graphic photos that I've ever seen in my life. But why did she show it a second time? <laughs> to make the effect twice as twice as no. the jury. But when when was she doing that? Was she doing that in the in the summation? Because I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh, she did. She had a. Oh yeah. Listen, it, it, behind her, like facing the jury, is a screen that's hanging down, and bigger than a projector screen you have in the old house. It's probably like eight feet wide, like six feet high. It's at least eight by six, ten by twelve. So when they're putting things on the on the projector of the elbow, that's what is being projected in front of the jury. Not like bright LED light. So they're sitting there, and you know, after they get and it was timed obviously, and she knew what her script was. So it was kind of like, you know, you get the insulting things from Wendy about people in Tallahassee and her desire to live down south. She's a little Tallahassee. She lied about the little in Tallahassee. And then her mother wants her to come down south. And then next thing you know, you see an autopsy photo of Ben. Jack Moto. You see what happens to him. And you get sick. And you got your little princess writing, writing, a, writing a story, foreshadowing. Saying it's just a fictional place, but let's be honest, like, it was North Florida State. The girl was a immigration lawyer, married to a college professor with two small children, boys, in a town that sounds just like Tallahassee. Like, you can be lying if you said it wasn't wrong about the Florida State. In the or somewhere in North Florida. And it was just a dot, it was just a, a, a small stop on the map on the way to civilization. I mean, listen, it's just a line in a book, but you gotta admit it, it's perfectly good with Kaplan's story. I can't totally do it. I just actually I just took you off speaker because while while we were talking, um, Dan just fell asleep. So I'm just I'm just putting you in my ear. Yeah, no, no, no. that's good. Dan is probably kicking in, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs that. Definitely keep him taking his ass because it's not worth on a heart attack or an overdose. No. That would be a Um, Look, I have a lot, a lot of information. I'm working on getting an appeals attorney, and yes, there are specific things that you can get an appeal for, but there are also 
extenuating circumstances, which is what I'm going for. So let's give it a little a little bit of a chance. What I'm confused about and I need to talk to Dan about tomorrow is um I don't know if it has to be filed within thirty days or sixty days. So if it's thirty I gotta get moving on this. Okay. Yeah, so no. I'll be in I mean, it has to be extenuating circumstances. Like, I, I'm just like that's how I feel. I mean, I, listen. I know everybody who loses a trial must feel that way, but like, no, this is this, this is this is different. Like this, this has to be part of a fucking bad movie. Like, Dan, Dan's been doing this for 25 fucking years. Like, he would never be saying the things he was saying. Of course he, not. Oh my God. Of course not. And look like a fool. Yes. Like, especially when I did as well as I did. And he did as well as he did. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, and for victories, no, guess what? When I'm using my ex here to get people off who listen to a six hour podcast, like, when I'm using my ex here to get people off a six hour podcast, and then the big witness, the headline case, and it could have been an extortion, right then and there, the case should be over. That's what it's about. Not not Wendy's book and her foreshadowing and her travel plans of that day and me calling seven five three oh five three six like I'm sitting there and I'm writing post it net after post it note after post it and handing it to Dan and he's just like stop. He's like stop it. And then we're back together. Like obviously he's not he can't do anything about it. He's gonna do his little shit. But like that's what it was, it was a little shit. He didn't have, you know, photos that were going to shake everybody to the core, it's all people saying, hey, they don't fit. Guess what? These people just saw the most graphic photos of their life left on the screen multiple times. The autopsy photos. Like, horrible, horrible, horrible photos. Like, you know, like, I know. Kind of stuff that people see probably when they go to war. They get PTSD from what they saw. And then me and Thomas after talking about Wendy going, you know, writing her book, taking a shit on you on the way on the way down south. You should use your common sense, guys. Listen, when someone talks to you like that, that's just saying like Yeah, you're 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 smarter than they are, you get the final word. Like you gonna you gonna buy this shit? Like, no. Why don't you listen to the witnesses? Listen to Luis Rivera. He said this could have been an extortion. Yeah. Like, that's your own state's witness. He's like, I would lie to. Okay, that's that's all enough that you need to quit right there. But it's not that they they confuse them with so much. Yeah. Other- it's- Temporary bullshit. Just, just bullshit. Yeah, that's what it was. Bullshit. Yeah. Literally. Cause it's, just, and it's funny. It, it, it made so much sense. Brian Watson at one point said to me, Charlie, if they ever find out the exact code on that TV that we would be screwed. Brian, you know why they're never going to figure out what the code is? Exactly what it is? Was, well, why? What's that? I go, there is, <laughs> there is no fucking code. You can't figure out code when there is none. So I can promise you in a billion years it'll never be figured out because there will never one. He's like, man, this adventure is really unfortunate. And I, you know, you know, whenever, you know, and, and, and it's easy things to grab hold of. I mean, there has to be, it's an understand and remember because it's easy. Yeah. And hey, listen. Um, the per- when the person shows up at the scene of the crime, they can, they can almost get planned on being arrested just for that. Right. I know. When, when, and, and suspect numero uno shows up at the scene of the crime that morning, an hour afterwards, by coincidence. You know, my friend from Detroit said that's one of the million. Yeah. I know. So in order to think she's innocent, she has to be that one in a million that she's innocent. The other 999,000 smell like shit. Mm. 
plate. That's the definition of being the wall. You ever see the movie My Cousin Vinny? Yeah, a long time ago. Do you remember how, like, when they, two boys, they were going on, like, a road trip, and they pulled into the convenience store in the sack of soap, and then they left. And then, like, as they were leaving, a car with near identical color, near identical size, the two people that fit their description pulled up, and they brought the place, and they killed the clerk. But when they left, that one that had a different model, almost identical. The only difference was one tire set positive rear traction, one tire spun while the other tire didn't. And she was the worst way on the stand that could have come from the same car and didn't have positive traction. I don't remember that. I don't. And they showed her the pictures of the tire marks. And if she was like, I'm using my whole stand with the mechanic, and I know the mechanic, and I can use Oh, right, when she was on the stand. Like, yes, yes, yes. Like, that car didn't come with a positive traction. It only came in the 67. The 66 didn't have positive traction. So the one tire was spinning while the other tire was up in the air, and that's why there was only one trim mark. They couldn't have been it. And they come in, and they're like, uh, someone was just arrested with this gun and this car. To the town over, and they were robbing the convenience store. It's like literally two guys fitting in a description in the same car, pulled up, like within seconds of them leaving, went in the store, killed, killed the clerk, and drove off. And these guys had just left the store with the same color car and the same description. Yeah. And it's like, what are the chances? I know. It's a really good example. I had forgotten about that. Yeah. They're like the eyewitness put them at the scene. Like their eyewitness has identified them and they and they and they had just left and they had the same car. Near identical same car, but the witnesses all identified them and put them there. And it's like but you think the witnesses are making it up that two youths with like the same nineteen sixty seven Pontiac fly green showed up. I mean, it happened. It, it happened. You were part. Isn't that positive traction? But my, my point is, is like, if that kind of thing was, you show a, a guy who works in the post office for 20 years, and there's all these streets, and she's taking streets she shouldn't be on, and she's taking the most direct route, and she's traveling 10 miles and having four liquor stores, and then she shows up at the crime scene. That was in the opening, that was in the closing. When they're opening and closing on the same stuff, those are the points they want to remember. Like, no debate about what happened at my house on the 18th. Yeah. And guess what? There ain't no debate that when you showed up at the crime scene an hour after it happened, 10 miles away. Yeah. Like, that is something that's hard evidence that you can't debate. Mine is he says she said. Right. You can't debate when he's showing up at the crime scene an hour after that. Ten miles away. You can't you can't argue it happens. You can't you can't argue the bullet that she wrote with the lines that she put in there. You can't speak it happens. Then you, just, then you put the P4, you go with the code and all that shit, and then you go, um, use your common sense. I mean, someone gives you that answer, use your common sense, what do you think it is? And by the way, she insulted you guys on the way out of town. She changed the kid's last name. She keeps the grandparents from seeing the kid. And found her way to civilization. And here's an autopsy photo. Yeah. And we found that having a nice conversation with them while the big screen, you know, eight by ten, eight feet by ten feet, the worst photo you've ever seen in your life. Telling them that a man is stripped naked and put on a slap photograph. That was all possible. A few hours earlier, he was at the gym. Yeah. Tallahassee. 
No, like, and then, like, and he suffered for 14 hours. Like, you know, you, you feel horrible. And then you, you feel horrible, and she said, she said, she said, 48 hours later, and it's not cooking. Like, he did something, nothing, nothing, and he didn't say, like, the lie that carried on relationship with her, who I did. In a normal world, this never would have flown because you would have you have a case that not everybody on the planet knew about. So I don't see wasting my head. I don't need John Newman to tell me not to get the girl who just watched over my dead body podcast on my case. You know, like how how insightful was he? For Dan to say I spent the most amount of time I ever had on a case, I've never known it this well. Defendant testify and score ninety five percent in my eyes, and you can't get one person to agree with you. Not one person. Working that one person who calls this case because usually when I have a case, I always want to get to one person out there who agree with me, so I know at least it's going to be a hung jury. Because this is crazy. Because in this case, I'm worried that we get one person who disagrees with us. And makes it and makes it a home jury because it's an eleven one. Like normally, I want to always get that one on there with the hang jury. Normally, defendants don't take the stand. No, that's right. Yeah, you know, you know, normally defendants don't take the stand, and and normally, you know, he just wants to get at least one person so it hangs. It wasn't like getting one person so it hangs. He was worried that that it was going to be, you know. You know, one person to vote for you, so hey, he was worried that he was only going to get 11 out of 12. He's like, we need to get you home. We need to get 12 out of 12, not 11 out of 12. I don't want to get 10-2 and do this thing over again for the whole jury. They'll do it over again. We need to get all 12. We bring Jock Dubin in that's going to really dig into these people's profiles and get the right people on here. Not one not one. I'm, I feel like I'm still in a fucking movie. Not, not one person? I mean, I know that's not an appellate issue, but it's just a, it's just a realization that it's between Josh Jackson and his whole fucking team and, his case and all the effort he put in, for him to tell me I did a 95% on the stand, he said to me, if you do a 70%, I'm driving you home. There's not a doubt in my mind. You do 70% of drive you home. That's all you got to get. He said you got a 95 because this was the best you ever testified. Mm-hmm. You can do that the nation. You're sharp. To the point. You can make your point. You can make a big deal about everything in her. You can be cool. Like, you carried the day. This was all you had. Yeah. This was you, man. You carried the day. Like, I got you there, but you, you did it, and we were so pumped last Friday. I know. We were okay. I haven't talked to, oh talk to Michael in a long time. And I, like, called him up on the phone. Right? I mean, it's got to be, like, the last time I talked to him was 118 days. So I called him up on the phone, and I was like, he was like, man, you did fantastic. He's like, I, I don't want to be crushed with you. He's like, she was getting frustrated with you. Like, he's like, she, she was like, I knew she was frustrated with you. She started asking you, how old is Brady? And what does she do for Dave? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, we, we really worked hard. And we, the case came in good. The case came in good. And, and Dan's a closer. Dan walks around saying his specialty is closing. Like, he's kind of not his. He's as good as they come. His specialty is closing. Like, I'm literally giving away all my stuff, taking my phone numbers with me to court because I don't think they're going to bring me back to top profile which is going to release me from the courthouse. Uh, 
probably everyone was just blindsided by by that. Really, everyone. I mean, it's not a health issue to go. Hey, we were blindsided by the word. It's like you're no, all right. simple. No, but it's not just, here. No, it's, it's not, supposed to be unpredictable. This listen, not when you have everything coming in perfect and Josh Dubin picking the jury. This wasn't me picking the jury. This was Josh Dubin picking the jury. Like, that's impossible for everything to come in perfect and even better. I mean, he's been successful with witnesses. He got more out of the police preparing than he thought he did. Yeah. He got more out of other people than he thought he got. He got into the pit because he didn't have to admit. I mean, they said to Luis Rivera, could it have been an extortion? Yeah. They could have been. She lied to me. Yeah. He, he didn't have to say that. He could just go, I don't know. Yeah. He could just go, I don't know all day. He, he gave him something huge. But those facts didn't need anything. We had a pile of shit. He had a pile of shit sitting next to the jury, dropped off by someone who was on their way to Miami, like she said she wanted to be in the book. A little few people from Tallahassee. And she made her way to the big city of Miami. And she's in Roosevelt. She wrote what she was going to do, and then she did it, and she showed up at the scene. Now you, now you see why, like, those people fucking hate it. You, you put all that in there, and then you show it on the top. You go to the 10 minutes and just talk about it. Talk about it. That's not a PowerPoint. You, you shouldn't be allowed to, like, I mean, may, maybe it's an appellate issue that she showed it twice. Maybe it's an appellate issue for how long she left it up there. But she was basically just buying a pass off and then showing off how she put it. I mean, Dan, Dan never thought that it would have been like this. He never would have spoken to Never had anything like this. Did he say he's never seen anything like this? Pretty much. Did he, uh, it just, sorry, it just doesn't seem real. No, I know it doesn't. It doesn't seem real to us either. No. This won't be a set of phone calls. Five. Yeah, Dad's asking me he doesn't want you to get cut off. Is it ten thirty or ten forty five that they cut it off? It should be ten forty five when the phone cuts off. It just happened to oh. my tablet at the arena today. Okay. Uh, yeah, it should get cut. Uh, okay. No. But it's like I mean it doesn't seem to be able I'm I'm feeling a little better now talking to you guys, talking to Blue and I but we'll get the we'll get the appellate lawyer. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't want to spend a fortune, but we got to get somebody good. I'm going to save money now. Charlie, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting names tomorrow, so trust me, I'm on it. I'm trying. We get names, and people are happy to talk to you, and yeah. I mean, listen, it's, we brought in Josh Dugan. Like this is not Charlie getting Charlie and Dan taking a jury. Oh, we screwed up. This is somebody who wrote the fucking book on jury selection. And then this right. is the case that came in, um, came in to the code. Like, even yeah. better. And then the evidence against me was, was so unbelievably strong that for six years they don't arrest me. Right. And then the evidence but, didn't change. Yeah. yeah. Like, the evidence didn't change. It takes the whole case. <laughs> She couldn't get any headway with me, so she did it with everything else. She painted the whole picture, but while she was doing it, she was insulting people in Tallahassee. That's, that's honest to God, that's where you lose people. Race, religion, and insulting person. And she knew it. You know, and you spin race, religion, Insult them personally, put together dateline, and then you throw some autopsy photos in. And then before it's over, you throw some more autopsy photos in. 
and you get sick. You get sick, you get angry, you feel insulted. You feel like you're smarter than this person that's doing this. And this person's arrogant. This person thinks he's untouchable. What are, what are they telling you when they're saying that and showing you autopsy photos? Oh, I'll show him who's untouchable. He thinks he's arrogant. He's arrogant, this Castleman. He's saying I'm arrogant. I'm arrogant. I'm untouchable. And I'm showing you the autopsy photos. You, you want to get somebody back when you're, when you're being like, when the person's saying that they think they're better than you, they think they're smarter than you, they're, they're writing books, they're, 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 they're telegraphing their moves in the book. Use your common sense. The girl showing up at the crime scene is writing a fucking book. She's telling you where she's moving. Like, it's just... It's not, it's not real because you know what? You take these simple lines, and I, and I will tell you that some of the coincidences are fucking scary. But you take the simple lines, you get them to hate the people, you show them coincidences that are extremely hard to believe that the, that the, the prime suspect shows up coincidentally at the crime scene. Literally. They, 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 they went and got prime suspect number one. The person who just drove by the crime scene. And you want to say, think with your common sense. Yeah, your common sense says she has to be involved. And if she's involved, he's involved. But that's not, that's not the case. No, I mean, that, no. I mean, that, that's as much the case as me calling the home phone over because you get better reception. On my cell phone. Like, it's not the case either, but it's, it's just statistically significant that. I mean, what are the chances of me calling the home phone number that they call the two trips that these guys went out? Like, geez, by the way, you, you know, like, the, the first time that these guys went out, they rented a I think like a silver Maxima or a silver Nissan Ultima 2004. Oh, it was, it was right. It was the identical car that Jeff Costa. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. But you ask Luis Rivera, hey, did anyone tell you to rent a certain car? Or was there any reason behind what car you rented? And he's like, no. Okay. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a frame job. <laughs> but, right. But literally, when Dan showed me what it was, it's like, it's like the same car that he owned. It's the identical car. Like, and then Jeff Lacoste goes, like, there's only two times that summer that I went on a vacation. The first week of June, and the and I was going to leave on the 18th, and I left the 17th of that. Those are the only two trips I took all the summer. Oh. That's significant if you're talking about framing somebody. Yeah. Maybe I guess you just truck it up to another coincidence, but like there would be corroboration with the people that did it if that's what was the, that was right. plan was. But, it, but that's why it was just something that Jeff would try to throw. That's why Jeff was so upset. He thought he was getting framed. He was no, that's the reason he did that. Of course. Witness to another he one. No, that's why he went in, like guns are blazing, throwing every name out there. And saying, look at look at her brother. He's got because he's I have pride. I had money. I'm a brother. Throw the name out. Her family. He's that one. You know, South Florida. South Florida's Cuban. Oh, he's got to know some Cuban people. Mm-hmm. No one was Cuban. So, like, oh, Hispanic. Well, Hispanic is not Cuban. Right. He's a Cuban. So, like, but it's it's just like. I get it. He thought he was being framed. He got mad. And he was he was trying to point fingers at everyone else but him. So don't look at me. Look at him. Look at this guy. Like, well, he put some fluff in there. But at the end of the day, it's still another witness of the state showing up and throwing shit. So it's like if Wendy, if they can make Wendy look bad, if they can make Wendy look as guilty as she can without arresting her, then they can convict. That's basically what it comes down to. That's basically what it comes down to. If they can make Wendy look as guilty as 
then I have to be good. That's why they're going after money. Yeah. yeah, I still say, like, what is the chance? Effect number one, travel to the cross. Yeah. It's so, it's so absurd, and yet, not for these people. Well, it happened, didn't it? Yeah, it happened. I mean, it's either, it's either a coincidence or she's involved. You be the judge. Who benefits? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to see that that was. But that's, that was, that's what the case came down to, and it came down to them getting rid of any possible term that could have been good for them. And there wasn't many to pick up. It was one mm-hmm. taking. It was split picking, and anybody who could have been possibly good got picked off. And and with this with this population, it was either mm-hmm. split picking or they have an outbreak. They're going to have an outbreak. Yeah. So it, you never it, it never would have flown. She she couldn't win on the facts with me, but she could win on a, on a character assassination of the Dayton special. With, with a slam dunk. I mean, listen, Dan's too smart to really be that long. Let me just put it that way. I'm, For him, it, it, and you know, we both know that that's absolutely true. Yeah, this was not a case with the facts. And like, at one time, I was going through this case with Dan, and you know what he said to me? He said, if this was a normal case, the evidence that we have to prove your innocence at this time, he said, I think I would call up the prosecutor and say, let's just meet and see if you got to go over this together and see if you want to dismiss the case. Those were his exact words. One thing we're going to be here. This, this evidence is so compelling of your innocence. Uh, he goes, if this was a normal case, I probably would sit down and show the prosecutor what we have at this point and see if they want to dismiss the case. That, that's what he was. That, that's what he felt in the case. He was worried about one juror not being with us. You know, you got Josh Dubin, the, the guru, couldn't 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 find the money. That with a case that you have this much like. Was it, you know, they're lacking so much, they don't even have a credible witness. Like, so it's a he said, she said, but you, you have a clear look, but the she said is lying through her teeth. Right. So, so what are you up against? You're up against the tenant. If there ever was like a, Circumstance where the temperature in the town made it so you couldn't have had a, a fair shake. This is not the case. Yeah. I mean, it has, it has to be. I mean, if the case you got in that big. If there was ever a case that that people said like you're not going to get a fair trial if God came down and tried this case, and not because there's like overwhelming evidence. There's not. No, this but, but there's over I mean there's overwhelming bullshit that paints a picture that's beyond horrible. That paints a picture, paints the motive, that makes these people look like horrible people. And you lie through your teeth and you, and you, there's no way there is no way you could have brought back Johnny Cochran. You would not have won this case. And not not because of evidence, but because of because of the shit you because of the date on social. Like this can't be the end. That's what we're gonna find. There's there's enough 
there's enough stuff that needs to be addressed and I'm not going to give up. I'm going to fight it. Well, I just hope that we get, that it's not the kind of thing that gets to like, you know, judges that only really see the side of the, the state and they're like, well, you know, like, you got screwed. You know, like, generally spoken, like, I just, I just hope that there's actually insinuating circumstances that people could look at a case and go, like, this is too serious of a thing with, and the way the state did it. And, but hey, they can hit the jury. It doesn't matter how they did it, I guess. Well, they, maybe, they, 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 maybe it does matter how they did it. There, there are some things in there that may matter. Well, I've, got a list, I've got a list of them, and we're going to see what we can do. Did, did they say that there's a chance, like a, a legitimate chance that some of them did? did. No, I didn't, I didn't talk to him about that. I had so many other things to talk about. I didn't talk about that, and, and I wanted to just, but that's why I said I don't know the, whether it's 30 days or 60. Okay. Maybe 30. I need to find out that, and I need to get some names and and check some people out, get some advice. I'm sure Wendy will know some people. We'll get know some people that would, would be good good advice. She might. Get. She might. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just yep. see what happens with the jewelry with those three jewelers. I know. Well, that's what we got to see that first. But that doesn't stop me from, in the meantime, trying to get somebody. Even if it's yeah. a backup, want to have it. Yeah, I listen. I, I appreciate you guys helping me. Well, it, as I said earlier, and, and it's, it's for legal reasons, it's not for any other reason that, um, that you haven't spoken to Wendy yet, but I can only tell you she can miss. She can miss. Yeah. Well, listen, she, she saw what happened. I don't know if they saw the court, but it was a trial, but they basically, they basically used to punish shit on her. Dirty meal. Yeah, that's what they did. You know, they, they went over there. You know, they just, but there's a point of, I mean, but has other people said to you that there's like legal ground that could maybe do something with this? There, there are, there are thoughts that something could be done. You know, I'm not going to discuss it with you now. Dan will tell you yeah. after we get some more information. Yeah. Well, I think it would hopefully that there's something over this conduct. And that's the easiest way to get something over the time is during this conduct. That's the number one way I've heard. Say that, say that again? That what? During this conduct is the number oh, one way true. to get something over the time. Yeah, well, I mean... That's why I'm, I'm hoping they find something that that would make life easy. Uh, that, would be, that would be a dream. That would be a dream. Yeah. yeah. During this time, the quickest way to get it for like, Oh, I know. That's, that's the number one reason. Yeah, that's the, that's the biggest and the best reason. But there has to be any reason circumstances when you're talking about, like, what went on here in this town, because there's no way that Dan was as prepared as he was. I did the 95% job I did. Josh Cuban comes in and, and oh, with this jury? Let me tell you something. This jury ain't any different than any other jury you can pull this out. If you can't get one and 12, how the fuck are you going to get 12? Charlie, just, it's FYI, it's 1041. So, I hate, I hate when they especially while you're talking. I don't know what that's me. No, I guess. But it could do it at any time with the reception on the thing. But, yeah. but you know what I'm saying, Ma? Like, if, the truth is, is that it wasn't Dan. It wasn't me. I'm in no. it. And, and, it, and it's just, I don't know. It wasn't Kate. It wasn't Ruben. You had, you, had, you had the best. You really had the best. I really had the 18. And you're going to tell me that between Dan, his team, how much evidence that they had that I was innocent, how much, how many things to raise reasonable doubt? 
that they couldn't come up with one fucking juror to vote for me? Not one? Come on, you need 12 to walk out. 12 to get you out the door. We couldn't get one. You think another batch of jurors was going to get me 12 to tell the Not with that fly show. Uh, she got frustrated with the witness, but the slideshow worked like a charm. You there? Right here. Right here. You know, like, there's, there's no way that Dan could have been that sure about that case. Like, okay, you could say, with, you know what, with that jury, you don't stand a chance. What was that jury? Because you're going to tell me another jury, you're going to get 12? No. That ain't gonna happen. They won't let it. They're gonna, they're gonna have the, the two in ten that are actually gonna give you a fair shot. They're gonna take off, and then the other eight are shit. They're all shit. You know, the fair shot people would be an anonymous person taking a case to court under a normal circumstance, not not a podcast and Dateline and Twenty Twenty and Global News and. Sit on the radio every fucking day, and do some newspaper, and small town, radio, newspaper, television, blogs, like nonstop third trial going on, them calling me the mastermind. Like, it was the Super Bowl. Anyway, I, I love you guys. Yeah. I love you too, honey. I love you, Charlie. All right. I'm, I'm I do better when I talk to you guys. Good. That's good. I know it's it's light and it's hard in there, but try try to post your eyes and get some rest, okay? It's a, it's a yeah, tough day. No, I'll be good. I'll, I'll give you guys a call tomorrow, okay? Perfect. Anytime. We're super early. Anytime you want. Right. Do I love you guys. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Better off taking a Xanax than a heart attack, okay? We got it. Okay. All right. I'll take the well, I love you guys. <laughs> I love you too, sweetie. Good night. Good night. Love you. Love you guys. Bye. Love you too. I think it's so.